I love the demons of Megami Tensei. I've talked about demons that I'd love to see get 3D models, I've ranked handfuls of brand new demons, and I've even talked about figures that I felt would make good demons. But in the over 30 years of the franchise's existence, there have naturally been a few demons that fell between the cracks. Forgotten, neglected demons that we haven't seen in a long, sometimes long, time. So today I want to highlight 10 forgotten demons that I'd love to see make a return to the Megami Tensei franchise. Just to keep things interesting, I'm going to be utilizing a few ground rules. Most notably, the demon can't have appeared in any Megami Tensei games in the past 10 years, and that includes re-releases like Nocturne HD and Persona 3 Portable. And even though I'm going to immediately add some conditions to this statement, they can only have had three or fewer appearances in the franchise. However, I'm mostly going to be looking at old Kaneko demons, so if the demon mainly appeared in like Devil Children or Majin Tensei, I'm allowing myself some wiggle room, and that also goes for re-releases of games or exclusively mobile side games. For example, I know Devil Summoner Soul Hackers has been released for the Sega Saturn, PlayStation, and 3DS, but for the sake of this video, that only counts as one appearance. Alright, enough exposition, let's talk about some demons. And I figure we can start things off easy with a demon I actually briefly mentioned in my recent Demons I'd Love to See an SMT video, The Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil, sometimes known as the Leeds Devil, is an American cryptid in southern New Jersey that goes all the way back to the 1700s. There have been many stories and supposed sightings of the beast over the centuries, but it's generally described as a tall, horse-like creature with giant wings who stands on two hooves, which even matches a seemingly separate Native American myth from nearby regions. The Jersey Devil is one of America's most well-known cryptids, and it fits perfectly alongside other demons like Mothman or Chupacabra. As of right now, the Jersey Devil has only appeared in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, the Card Summoner game, and the PlayStation versions of the original Devil Children titles. Which, by the way, look at how freaking cute this Devil Children design is. Also, fun fact about the Jersey Devil, did you know one of the reported sightings of the beast was by Napoleon's brother? Yeah, that Napoleon. Also, the Philadelphia Zoo will supposedly pay $10,000 to anyone who can bring them the Jersey Devil, so feel free to get devil hunting, I guess. This next demon has always been the first one that comes to my mind whenever I think about the idea of neglected Megaten demons, because Crusader here has only shown up once. Ever. And it was specifically in the TurboGrafx-16, or should I say PC Engine version, of the first Shin Megami Tensei. And yeah, what you see here is what you get. It's a skeletal knight in a suit of armor, presumably one who fought in the Crusades, which lasted from the late 1090s until nearly the 1300s. There's just something I find so fascinating about this demon, though. There have been demons that appeared in multiple games that never got official artwork, but some random one-off demon from a ported version has art? I also think the missing leg and flag walking stick would make for some fun and distinct animations if it got a 3D model, and perhaps the most interesting bit of potential is supposedly this guy was going to be a fiend. If they do bring Crusader back, I'd love to see it alongside other classic skeletal demons like Matador or the Riders. And speaking of bringing back fiends, where the heck is Beanbogami? This is another demon that's only appeared once ever, and it was in Devil Summoner 2, Raido Kuzunoha vs. King Abaddon. Beanbogami is a Japanese god of bad luck and misfortune that haunts the home of lazy people and drives them to poverty and ruin. He fit really well in King Abaddon's luck-based plot and made for a few memorable boss fights. The sad, upside-down man hanging from the cloud, whipping his hair back and forth, was just a great design, and I loved it. I remember being really hopeful that they might have brought him back in Soul Hackers 2, since that is basically Devil Summoner 5, but no luck there. Oh yeah, and I guess they could also bring back Yakubyogami. He was in King Abaddon 2, but... If I had to pick one, I'd rather just see Beanbogami again. Okay, so this next one I'm bringing up because it kind of baffles me that we haven't seen more of this demon. More specifically, I'm baffled that he never got an updated design. We all know Chernobog, right? He's a pretty big figure in the series and actually appears as a boss in a lot of games. 
Well, originally, he looked like this, and Chernobog, who was the Slavic Black God of Death, was the counterpart to Belobog, the White God of Life. Belobog had a design to parallel Chernobog in the olden days, but Chernobog went on to get an updated Soul Hackers design, while Belobog didn't. The two would eventually be reunited in Demikids as Whiskers and Doomborg, but outside of that series, Bellobog really only appeared in Shin Megami Tensei If and a handful of cell phone games. He's still regularly mentioned in Chernobog's compendium entries in titles as recent as Persona 3 Reload, Soul Hackers 2, and Shin Megami Tensei 5, but he just hasn't actually appeared. I think the thing that honestly bugs me the most is that Atlas had the perfect opportunity to bring Bellobog back to the franchise and for him to get an updated Kaneko design, because where the heck was this dude during the War of Bell in Devil Survivor? And speaking of Devil Survivor, Overclocked was over 10 years ago, so honorable mention to Jezebel. Bring her back too. Speaking of cheating with my numbers, our next entry is actually going to be two demons whose combined appearances still adhere to my three or fewer rule, and despite how connected their myths are, they've never appeared together. Maui has only appeared in the original Devil Summoner and Card Summoner, while Tunaroa has only appeared in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. Given their history, I want to see these two in the same game preferably if that game is also one with special demon conversations. Also, I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Why the heck wasn't Maui an ultimate persona in Persona 5? He's like one of the best trickster deities out there. We were robbed. Anyway, the story of Maui and Tunaroa varies a bit, but the general gist is that Tunaroa had a girlfriend named Hina who left him to try and find a new lover, which she did in Maui. Tunaroa attacked Maui, and then you may be familiar with the rest of the story if you've ever seen Moana. I killed a meal, I buried its guts, sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts. I'll admit I'm a bit biased, and these two are on the list because I will always want to see more Hawaiian and Polynesian representation in the franchise. It's no secret that most of my favorite demons tend to be based more on folklore and urban legend over big iconic gods. You tell me Zeus is in a new game, and I'm like, Snoresville, but you tell me that La Llorona, the crying woman of Mexican ghost stories, is coming back, and now you have my attention. I absolutely love the design of this demon. From the dress, to the pattern, to the terrifying featureless face, La Llorona is such an iconic ghost story, and this is such a good design for her that it's absolutely wasted, having only appeared in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers and Card Summoner, and yes, I'm aware there's a bit of a pattern in this video. This is a great design for a really solid figure and an iconic ghost story, and you can't tell me it'd be boring to see it in motion with that dress flowing around. And while I'm on the subject, I don't even remember which video I did this in. I know I mentioned this figure before, and I pronounced it La Llorona, and yes, I am still embarrassed and sorry. This next demon is a unique one, because I said these demons had to have three or fewer appearances in the franchise. And this demon not only has that, but zero of those appearances have been in video games. We all know and love Jack Frost as the mascot of Atlas. We love him, we love Black Frost, we love the Frost Five. There honestly isn't a single variation of this hee-ho happy snowman that I don't love. And presumably, ruling over all these jacks is the King Frost, and aiding the King is the elite soldier Frost Ace. Jack, King, Ace, doesn't it seem like one is missing? Well, truth is, she's not missing, they just won't put her in any of the Ding Dang games, because yes, we have a Queen Frost, she has a Kaneko design, and her only appearances have been in the Devi Chill anime and the Devil Children card game. I absolutely love this design, and it works really well in both complementing and contrasting with her kingly counterpart. I know some of you may be thinking, well, yeah, but she's technically a Devil Children design, so she can't make the move to the main series. But here's the thing, the King Frost design that most of us know in the franchise was the Devil Children design, and Frost Ace himself was a Devil Children original. So, yeah, Atlas can totally make it happen, they need to give us our queen. I'll admit that some of the reasons why I've picked these specific demons I've picked for this video may seem odd, but this one seems extra weird even to me. 
Sobek is the crocodile god of ancient Egyptian mythology, and he's frequently depicted as the creator of the Nile and associated with fertility, military prowess, and in some minor instances he's a trickster where he just messes with the other gods. His only major appearances have been in the original Megami Tensei and its SNES remake, Shin Megami Tensei IF, and Last Bible 3. While he doesn't seem to have any official Kaneko art, there is a very nice piece of fan art based on his sprite that tried to emulate Kaneko's style of the era. Now, while I do like Egyptian mythology and think a crocodile god would be fun, you all probably want me to get back to that main reason I picked him for this list, huh? Well, remember a while back when I did an entire video just gushing about how much I loved Scruffy Turtle's Persona 5 Adult Confidant Alternate Universe and talked about all the initial Personas? Scruffy Turtles once confirmed that Sobek was going to be the ultimate persona of Munahisa Gecko Iwai, and yes, I would truly love to see Kaneko Sobek design appear in the modern franchise, but more than anything, I just really want to see that planned Persona 5 fan design. Please make it happen, Scruffy Turtles. He's probably not watching this. Some of my favorite demons of all time are those found in the Ars Goetia. Decarabia, Orobus, Andrus, Shax, they're fun demons, and truthfully one day I would love to see all 72 of them in a single game through a combination of their Kaneko and Doi designs. Well, while some of these demons appear very frequently, I mean, we're all familiar with Thornius, right? Others haven't been so lucky, like Seer here, who, you guessed it, has only appeared in Devil Summoner Soul Hackers and Card Summoner. This demon is typically described as a beautiful man riding a winged horse, who unlike many of the other demons is pretty indifferent to committing evil deeds, and I adore that Kaneko depicted that as a naked brooding emo femboy on a carousel horse. Honestly, just getting a chance to see the horse sliding up and down that pole like a merry-go-round makes me want to see it get a 3D model. Seer here could be a fun and memorable demon, especially if he gets to converse with some of his colleagues. Alright, and I've saved the very best for the very last. The oldest demon on this list who has only appeared in the very first Megami Tensei and its SNES remake. The true awesome icon of myth, superstition, and perfection of nature, I bring to you... Dead Lobster. It's a lobster. That's dead. Dead Lobster. See, this demon is great because it works on multiple levels. For one, Dead Lobster sounds like Red Lobster, a popular seafood restaurant chain known for their delicious garlic cheesy biscuits and Mountain Dew margaritas. The second thing here, and I mean this sincerely, is that I honestly do love the origin of this demon. It comes from an urban legend that dead lobsters are poisonous or dangerous in some way to eat, which is why we typically boil them alive. Like most urban legends, this isn't entirely true. I mean, yes, if you just find a dead lobster on the ground, I don't recommend eating it, but I'd say that's true for basically any animal. However, if you buy a live lobster from a grocery store and it's dead by the time you get home, you can still cook it, it's fine. All jokes and tomfoolery about me picking dead lobster aside, I actually do really like the idea of having demons based on superstitions about real animals alongside the cryptids, gods, and demons we're more familiar with. Imagine a demon based on the idea of the unlucky black cat, or the gators that live in the sewers. Bringing back dead lobster could be the start of an interesting new branch of Megami Tensei demons in the future. Also come on, it's dead lobster! Alright, and that's my 10 picks for this video. Truthfully, there were a lot of demons that I thought were eligible for this list, but then I looked back at their game history and they have appeared in more stuff than I thought. But what about you? Who are some demons that you'd love to see make a comeback in the franchise? You don't have to limit yourself to the same rules that I did, but I'd still be down to hear who comes to mind when you think of neglected demons. For now though, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future content. And until next time, take care.